Do you remember the first time you stumbled upon the whimsical world of H.R. Puffinstuff? Picture yourself, perhaps as a wide-eyed child, or even as an adult with a curious spirit, sitting in front of the television screen back in 1969. The year was a different era, and so was the show, a kaleidoscope of colors, talking trees, and a bumbling, lovable dragon named H.R. Puffinstuff. Those were the days when TV had the power to transport you to a land of enchantment where the lines between reality and fantasy blurred in the most delightful way. As the catchy theme song filled the room, you were likely drawn into the mesmerizing adventures of Jimmy and his magical dragon friend, living on the living island of Living Island. And who could forget the nefarious Witchapoo with her cackling laugh and outlandish schemes? It was a show that left an indelible mark on the hearts and minds of its viewers, a cherished memory for generations to come. But there's more to H.R. Puffinstuff than meets the eye. Behind the scenes, the show was a pioneering marvel of puppetry and set design, pushing the boundaries of what was possible in children's television. Did you know that the title character, H.R. Puffinstuff, was originally conceived as a traveling exhibit for the World's Fair? Or that the iconic costumes and puppets were meticulously crafted by talented artisans? So, whether you're reminiscing about your first encounter with H.R. Puffinstuff, or just discovering it for the first time. Get ready to embark on a journey filled with delightful random facts about this beloved TV series that continues to bring joy to audiences of all ages. Strap in, because we're about to explore the magic and mystique of H.R. Puffinstuff like never before, 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 before. In 1969, the TV series H.R. Puffinstuff became a sensation. One interesting aspect of the show's history involves its theme song. Paul Simon took legal action against creators Sid Croft and Marty Croft, alleging that they had plagiarized his song, the 59th Street Bridge song. The lawsuit ended with Simon receiving a writing credit for the series' theme song. This legal battle added a unique twist to the show's legacy. H.R. Puffinstuff was a hit from the start, leading to NBC renewing it for a second season. However, despite its popularity, the show became a financial drain for the producers. Eventually, the costs became unsustainable, and the producers declined to continue. This decision forced the network to air reruns instead. The show's success, legal battles, and financial challenges created a memorable chapter in television history, making H.R. Puffinstuff a notable show of its time. Show of its time. Show of... In 1969, the TV series H.R. Puffinstuff created quite a buzz with its colorful characters and imaginative world. While there isn't substantial information about Marty Croft accepting guardianship of Jack Wilde during the show's production, it's worth noting that Croft had two teenage daughters, and his experience with Wilde, who played Jimmy, the lead character, was challenging. Croft later remarked that Wilde made my life hell, suggesting that the teenage actor might have been a handful during his time in America filming the show. One notable aspect of the show was its sponsorship deal with Kellogg's Serial. As part of this deal, Kellogg's released tie-in giveaway items that included bike pennants, stickers, rings, a replica of Freddy the Flute, and a soundtrack album featuring 11 songs from the show. This partnership helped to popularize the series among children and further embedded it in pop culture. Additionally, the character Freddy the Flute, an important part of the show, was created by Coral Care. She was tasked with coming up with a conscience-like character for Jimmy. Interestingly, Kerr discovered 35 years later that some of the male members of the art department, including Sid Croft, had concerns about Freddy the Flute's design, fearing it might appear too phallic for a television show. In conclusion, H.R. Puffinstuff remains a memorable TV series from 1969, known not only for its whimsical characters and imaginative world, but also for its tie-in promotions with Kellogg's Serial and the intriguing story behind the creation of Freddy the Flute. It's a testament to the show's enduring impact on popular culture. Popular culture. Popular culture. In 1968, the character H.R. Puffinstuff was born at the Hemi's Fair 68 World's Fair. The Crofts, creators of the show, originally designed a dragon named Luther for the Coca-Cola Pavilion. Luther's appearance in colors got a makeover, and the show was almost named Lutherland until a friend suggested Puffinstuff, inspired by the song Puff the Magic Dragon. Jim Neighbors initially voiced Luther, but was replaced by Lenny Weinrib due to recording issues. Weinrib continued to use the same voice for Puffinstuff. 
The show's creator, Sid Croft, was inspired by The Wizard of Oz, a movie he saw during its original theatrical run when he was just 10 years old. The series drew parallels to The Wizard of Oz, with characterizations like the witch and the trees bearing a resemblance. When casting for the role of Witchapoo, only two actresses auditioned. Penny Marshall was the first, but she didn't fit the part. Billy Hayes, a stage veteran, came next, let out a maniacal cackle, and hopped up on a desk, earning the role instantly. And that's a peek into the origin and inspiration behind the 1969 TV series H.R. Puff and Stuff, a whimsical show that left its mark on television history. Gen history. Gen history. Gen history. The idea of Living Island using buttons as currency came from Sid Croft's childhood. As a kid, Head charged friends buttons, not pennies, to view puppet shows in his backyard. In the world of the 1969 TV series H.R. Puff Stuff, Living Island was a place where whimsy and imagination knew no bounds. One of the quirkiest aspects of this fantastical land was its use of buttons as currency. It might seem like a peculiar choice, but the inspiration behind it goes back to the creator, Sid Croft's own childhood. Long before H.R. Puff and Stuff became a beloved show, Sid Croft was just a kid with a passion for puppetry. In his backyard, he would put on puppet shows for his friends. But instead of charging them in pennies like most young entrepreneurs, Sid had a unique approach. He asked for buttons as payment. This childhood quirk eventually found its way into the fabric of H.R. Puff and Stuff. On Living Island, buttons were the medium of exchange, adding an extra layer of charm to this already enchanting world. It's a testament to how personal experiences can shape creative endeavors, turning something as simple as button collection into a memorable aspect of a cult classic TV series. So, the next time you watch H.R. Puff Stuff and see those colorful buttons being used as currency on Living Island, remember that it all began with a young Sid Croft in his backyard puppet shows. And that's a charming glimpse into the origins of this timeless series. Ranked 22 in TV Guide's list of the 25 top cult shows ever. Additionally, H.R. Puff Stuff holds a special place in television history. It's been recognized as a cult classic landing at the impressive 22 spot on TV Guide's list of the 25 top cult shows ever. This ranking highlights the enduring appeal and influence of the show, even decades after it first graced our screens. From its unique characters to its imaginative storytelling, H.R. Puffstuff continues to captivate audiences and earn its spot as a beloved cult classic. So, whether you're a die-hard fan or just discovering the magic of Living Island, H.R. Puffstuff remains a beloved and iconic part of television history. 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 McDonald's vs. H.R. Puffstuff, a battle over resemblance in 1970. A peculiar legal dispute emerged when the creators of the 1969 TV series H.R. Puffstuff, Sid Croft and Marty Croft, took on fast food giant McDonald's. The issue at hand, copyright infringement. The Crofts claimed that McDonald's characters, Mayor Machis and Big Mac, bore a striking resemblance to their own creations from the whimsical show. They also pointed out eerie similarities between the show's living trees and apple pie trees featured in McDonaldland. The lawsuit raised eyebrows as the Crofts were adamant about protecting their unique characters and world. They argued that the unmistakable parallels between Mayor Machis and the blustery mayor of Living Island, H.R. Puffstuff, were too close for comfort. Big Mac, they contended, bore an uncanny resemblance to the lovable dragon character, Kling, from their show. Even the apple pie trees, a central feature of H.R. Puffstuff, seemed suspiciously reminiscent of McDonald's dessert-themed landscape. However, McDonald's defended itself vigorously, claiming that any similarities were purely coincidental and that their characters were entirely their own creation. A legal battle played out for some time before ultimately settling out of court, with details of the resolution remaining undisclosed. What's particularly intriguing is that H.R. Puffstuff had often been associated with drug imagery due to its psychedelic visuals, and a character named Puff and Stuff. Despite this, Sid Croft and Marty Croft vehemently denied any drug-related connections to their show. They maintained that the show's imaginative and surreal elements were purely intended for children's entertainment. Furthermore, H.R. Puffstuff holds the distinction of being the only Croft show from that era that was shot on film, 
setting it apart from its counterparts. However, despite its creative success, the series turned out to be a financial disaster for the Crofts. As a result, they switched to videotape production with the Bugaloos, aiming to reduce costs and take advantage of emerging blue screen technology and television. In the end, the legal clash between HR Puff Stuff and McDonald's serves as a reminder of the intricate world of copyright and intellectual property, even in the most whimsical of settings. While the lawsuit may have settled, the echoes of this peculiar legal battle continue to resonate in the annals of television history. In history, in history, as we draw the curtains on our journey through the whimsical world of HR Puff Stuff, I invite you to pause and reflect on your personal connection with this iconic 1969 TV series. Whether you were a wide-eyed child discovering the magical realms of Living Island for the first time or an adult charmed by its quirky charm, H.R. Puffstuff holds a unique place in the hearts of many. Perhaps you recall the catchy tunes that danced through the airwaves, or the endearing characters like Jimmy, Freddy the Flute, and of course, the lovable Mayor H.R. Puffstuff himself. Maybe it's the fantastical sets and the imaginative adventures that left an indelible mark on your memories. Now, it's your turn to share. What are your fondest recollections of H.R. Puffstuff? Were there life lessons, moments of laughter, or episodes that sparked your imagination? Feel free to share your favorite memories or thoughts about this timeless classic with us, and let the nostalgia flow. In a world where time marches on, it's comforting to revisit the treasures of the past. Your stories add depth to the tapestry of H.R. Puffstuff's legacy, reminding us that the magic of this show transcends generations. Thank you for joining us on this stroll down memory lane. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated. Keep the memories alive, and let's continue to celebrate the enchantment of H.R. Puffstuff together. Warm regards and nostalgia-filled dreams. dreams.